Hello and welcome to My Security TV and our Tech and Sec Weekly, our Friday morning episode. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the director with My Security Media. Today we're crossing over to the US, uh, South Carolina, I believe he is in. Uh, Rob Shaw, Senior Vice President with Marketing with Infineera, it's a telecommunications uh, company and uh, based in uh, San Jose in the US as well. We're going to look at their GX Series Compact Modular Platform, just been deployed in Malaysia. So we'll get a bit of an industry insight, particularly on optical networking and uh, where that sector is moving over to. Okay, so here's Rob Shaw, Senior Vice President, Marketing with Infineera. Rob, thanks for joining us. Oh, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, Rob, uh, maybe introduce us to Infineera. Some of uh, us over here in, in APAC may not be aware of you. Uh, I've had the pleasure of visiting uh, your head office uh, when it was in Sunnyvale. I believe it's in San Jose now. And we're going to look at uh, optical networking. Uh, GX Series Compact Modular Platform is going to be rolled out in Malaysia. So maybe introduce us to Infineer and then we'll talk about your role as well. So, you know, Infineer, we're an optical solution provider, optical networking solution provider. Um, and if you kind of think about it, I think everybody kind of gets the idea that information needs to be transported from one place to the next. Um, and really, the, the predominant way that's done is with optical networking. If you, if you really think about it, uh, optical fibers are kind of the highway infrastructure of the communications network. And, and there's two real key components to that. Of course, the fibers, which are kind of like the roads. And then you have uh, the transmission equipment that are the vehicles that transmit across those roads. So we don't make fiber itself, but we do make uh, the equipment that transmits the information across the fibers, uh, which is everything from aggregation. So we aggregate traffic and then we uh, generate and actually manufacture the lasers that do the transmissions, whether that's from your house to uh, central office or even across the oceans or between cities. Now, maybe just talk us through the, you know, the optical side of that of the technology of what you're actually doing. You mentioned the lasers there. Uh, and at the time, there's uh, sort of issues around sort of the space available on, on in this technology as well and what it's been built on. There's quite a, some advancements being made here. Where, where is this at? Where's and maybe where the GX series is at? Is that just continuing to advance? And what type of key technology is it using? Yeah, it's a great question. In optical networking, there was a handful of watershed moments that were really pretty uh, to help define the space. Obviously, there's fiber transmission itself. This is only about 50 years old, <clears throat> the ability to transmit information across a fiber. Uh, what we And of course, you do that with a laser. You shine a light down a fiber and it, you, know, you flash it, and that's how you communicate ones and zeros down the fiber. But obviously, there's limitations there, and, and you can certainly increase the speed of the laser, but there's only so fast you can go. So the next big watershed moment was a way to get more information across a fiber that instead of transmitting a single source of light down a fiber, you could actually tune each laser to a specific color of light, multiplex those together, and now transmit many colors, many different optical signals down the same fiber, each with a different color of light. Um, that was called dense wave division multiplexing and got us to about 90 to 100 different optical signals down a single fiber, so increasing the capacity of a fiber network by 100 times. Uh, the next real big watershed moment was uh, a, the inception of a technology called coherent based optical transmissions. And if you think about the traditional method of transmitting, it was called direct detect. It just light is on or off and you have an optical receiver. But light is more complicated than that, right? It's both a waveform and a particle and you've got a vertical component and a horizontal component of each one. And by manipulating those, instead of just the power levels, you can manipulate the phase of the wavelength, you can man manipulate the vertical and horizontal polarization modes of each light. Um, it requires a much more sophisticated transceiver, but what it enabled us to do is go from direct detect lasers, which could do about 10 gigabits per second of transmission, and coherent now has pushed us to, well, as you've uh, seen, and we've done some press releases on, uh, we now have each individual wavelength out of those 100 wavelengths um, can do up to 800 gigabits per second of information on one wavelength. So uh, quite a lot of transitions. And that's really only been about the last seven or eight years. We went from 10 gig to 800 gig uh, per wavelength. How long have you been at 800 gig? A few years uh, or? Just just recently. So really, it started being deployed. Uh, that technology started being deployed uh, last year, and we're starting to see a ramp up of it uh, this year. Um, there's only two suppliers in the industry that have this technology. As you might imagine, as you get higher and higher capacity lasers, they become more complex. 
fewer and fewer people have the capability to build them. So it's just us, us and one other person. Uh, their solution came out uh, last year and ours is going to be released this year. Okay. And uh, in terms of um, the, the tech and the size, so we're at 800 gig now, is that we're heading to a terabyte or does it double as well uh, in terms of general well, speeds? Yeah, it's a great question because um, there's this, you've got a couple different laws working against you here. Uh, mm. One, of course, is uh, so the Shannon limit, which is a big one. So one thing you can always do to increase the capacity of individual lasers, you can actually increase the amount of spectrum that it consumes. So if you think of um, the, you know, it's a specific colors of light that, that you can transmit on a fiber and they call that the C band. Um, and that C band has a certain number of frequencies. So historically, a single laser would take up about 32 gigahertz worth of frequency, and you can do about 96 to 100 of them inside that range of, of, of frequencies. So one thing, you, one trick you can do is you can actually use up more spectrum with a single laser, uh, giving you more capacity per laser. So that lowers the economics because each laser is producing more, more uh, bandwidth, but it is consuming more of the spectrum, so you're not increasing the capacity of the fiber. And what we're seeing now, and, and most network operators want both. They not want not only a lower price per laser or per bit, they also want to increase the capacity of their fiber. And Shannon's limit, which is essentially where we're just about reached with this 800 gig generation, um, we're at the limit of how much information you can put on a fiber given the current type of technology that we're using. Um, and so now the only benefit you're going to get out of successive generations is lowering cost per bit, but capacity per fiber is capped. Let me, I just wanted to make one point real quick. You think about the capacity per fiber, it's, it's, it's really mind boggling. We just did a trial with Facebook across the Atlantic. So one of their Atlantic cables, they call it the Marea cable. Um, on a single fiber cable, and I believe there's six in the, in, the, in the cable, there's six fiber pairs. Um, one pair of cables, we did 28 terabits of capacity, 28 terabits. If you think about how much that is, that's per one second? fiber. Per second, 28 terabits per second of, of transmission. That is the entire capacity of the SpaceX program. So yeah. Elon Musk, and I like SpaceX program, it has a lot of benefits, but the entire SpaceX is 32 terabytes. And, and it is interesting, you know, uh, in terms of that, because I know that there's been some recent cable lays uh, here in the Asia Pacific too. I think it was one off to Japan. Uh, and I think, you know, again, I'll have to check. I'll, I'll check my notes, but um, that was around that. Uh, 24 terabyte uh, as well um, but yeah I'll check on that in terms of that was just late, uh, late last year um, have you got us again have you frozen again I am no, I, I'm back thanks okay good work look that that's fascinating and I was I was about to make a Facebook joke that uh, they're sucking 28 terabytes <laughs> data about us every second which is probably not too too short um, there's a bit of an issue here with Facebook in Australia, but they're back on, uh, they're uh, showing our news now. Um, well, let's talk about some of the deployments. So if you've got a sort of, you're up to that 28 terabytes per fiber, uh, that's pretty incredible. Um, where this is just off the back of a, an announcement that you're rolling this out with uh, Allo Technologies uh, in Malaysia. Uh, how transformative is this? You talk, there's only two players in this particular space as well. Um, how, how transformative is this for, say, a country like Malaysia? Is this uh, on their sort of public systems and their public internet systems, or is this more of a private network being rolled out? No, it, it, it's, you know, this type of capacity is, is primarily used for backbone networks, uh, which carry everything, you know, whether it's public, private, enterprise, uh, data center traffic, everything goes across these backbones. And, and when I say backbone, it's not just national networks, it's metros have backbones also. Um, but essentially the way these networks work is the information is aggregated into these kind of uh, hub locations. And then our technology is large, this type of technology is largely used to interconnect those hubs. And like, for example, a typical metro area might have 20 hub locations. And then you, of course, you connect one city to another city and then across the sea. So by the time it hits this traffic, or this technology, it's, it's carrying everything. Um, but in terms of transformative, the reason why what we did at LO is, is really significant is there's a big transformation going on in optical networking, not just advanced technology, but because there's fewer players do things and it requires a lot of specialization, we're seeing this big transition to what we call open optical networking. 
It used to be that the same person that built the roads, you'd have to buy that person's cars. So, you know, if you bought vendor X's road, you'd have to then buy all of their cars. Um, but what we're recognizing and network operators are recognizing is that the person who built the road doesn't always have the best car. And they're really looking to be able to choose from anybody's car, anybody's lasers uh, to transmit their information. And that's why what we've done here is so significant is because this is a network that has a number of different road vendors and they're using our technology, which I would argue is the best car, is the best uh, transmission vehicle. And we're now driving over that. So they're seamlessly operating our car across multiple roads. And even more than just over a road, it's going from one vendor's road onto another vendor's road and then onto a third vendor's road, um, all without having to terminate the signal. And that's that's really significant because it gives network operators a lot more opportunity to pick and choose from the best solutions for every function in the network. And this is something they haven't had before. And, and Alu is being a, a pioneer in this space and then helping to drive that, make, bring it to fruition, make sure those networks can be operated uh, in that fashion. Well, give Allo uh, a, a bit of a plug here as well. So the Allo is, a, is the Allo carrier network is the superhighway backbone of Malaysia. Uh, and so there's some quotes here, and I'll put this uh, the link out to uh, this release. But uh, Allo Technology is based in uh, Cyberjaya in Malaysia. I think it's just outside of Kuala Lumpur. Um, so have you been working with them for a while, or is this a, a sort of new arrangement that you've had? And I noticed they've gone for the 600 gig, and obviously there'll be uh, that potential to future-proof it to that 800 gig. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Infinera, of course, is an aggregation of a handful of different uh, companies. Uh, about three years ago, we acquired a company called Corient, which actually is where I'm from. Corient was an aggregation of a bunch of companies, Nokia Siemens Networks and Tel Labs and Sycamore. Um, so, yeah, between the group of entities, uh, we've, we have been working with them for, for a handful of years here, um, at least. But, of course, this is a okay, uh, look, this is significant um, because uh, it's beyond just the part of the network that we own. Uh, that's with our roads, it goes over multiple vendors' roads, which is what the kind of, the, like I said, the big news here is. Fascinating. Uh, and, and it's uh, critical to all of our technology right now in terms of uh, the backbone uh, fiber links as well. So um, I think we'll cut it a little bit short. I, I do apologize. We'll, we'll cut it short. But I, like I said, I'll uh, put the link out to the show notes. And we've got quite a bit of a delay, unfortunately. We, your audio is OK, but uh, you're a bit jumpy there. So we'll, we'll cut it short. Um, and that's uh, Rob Shaw, Senior Vice President Marketing with Infinera uh, and looking at the GX Series compact modular plat platform, uh, reaching up to 800 gigs per wavelength. Uh, and as he mentioned, uh, ter 28 terabyte per fiber uh, per second uh, backbone link. So very impressive. Um, so look, Rob, thanks very much, mate. And I'll, I'll sign you out. Great. Thanks for having me. Sorry about the connectivity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a shame. Yeah, what a shame. Yeah. We'll have you back. Cheers, mate. Okay, bye-bye. Okay,